Big night in the whack, everybody. It is Taco Tuesday, which means wacky whack basketball is back because we have league play. Did you like that intro there, Spencer? I thought that was pretty good. I thought I thought you should have gone Taco Tuesday followed by Wacky Wednesday tomorrow. But yeah, I thought I thought that was that was solid. <laughs> well, we could do I could do that tomorrow when I preview all the games tomorrow. So uh yeah, I have to be a little bit quieter because I have my five month old niece asleep in the room that's on the other side of my wall. So I'm trying to not talk too loud. But anyways, so we tip off a uh, whack play in November. That is pretty wild. I'm writing on my preview right now of the game tonight. And uh, let's just say it's it initially it looked great on paper. Like it looked exciting to see this rematch of the 2023 whack tournament championship game. I think it's lost a little bit of its luster considering where one team is and the other team is right now. Uh, but it is November, so I don't know what to make of this ball game tonight that you're going to be on the call for on ESPN Plus between the Southern Utah women versus California Baptist from America First Event Center in Cedar City. So first off, it is so good to talk to you. It's been a minute. You too, man. You too. Hoop. Always fun. It's so, hoop season, baby. Yeah, it's official, was- like FCS football, you know, has got the playoffs and whatnot. But here in Cedar City, it's all it's all hoops now after the football team got their first winning season in six years. So it's it's a fun time. My favorite time of year for broadcasting. Very nice. And and I just want to tell him, tell Spence, and tell everybody that's listening to this little clip here, I told him to have some faith in the Southern Utah men last week when they were playing down in Ruston, Louisiana. Sure, they lost to Louisiana Tech, but, now, but they followed it up with a win over – remind me who it was over. Texas State. Texas State, who beat UT Arlington the other night in Arlington. So You, you did like the T-Birds before the game. You texted me and said, I, I think this is a bounce-back spot for Southern Utah. And I said, hey, we'll we'll take it. We, yeah. we, 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 we'll absolutely take it. And they, they got it in, in a big, big way. The men who I, I think we're getting to a little bit later, they got some guards. They got some yeah. real guards. For sure. For sure. So let's talk about this women's game. Last year, Southern Utah won both games against California Baptist. First one was in Cedar City, and then at the Orleans Arena in the WAC Tournament Championship. Almost by the this like the, the scores were similar. Like I'm, I'm writing that up and I'm previewing. I'm looking at the history. It's like I think it was 82 75 and one, and 83 75 and the other. Uh, let's let me look here just to be sure. I'm on my article right now that I'm, I'm writing pretty sure about Cedar this. City was 83 75. Yeah, and then in the championship game, what was it in the championship game? Oh, I don't have that score off the top of my head, but I I think it was it was pretty close. And the other interesting thing too, Kyle, is both games followed I think a pretty similar trajectory, which was Southern it was competitive throughout. You never felt like one team was dominating the other, but Southern Utah got an early lead and then never really gave it up. Yeah. And every time CBU made a run, Southern Utah had an answer and they would push the lead back out. You know, it was kind of hovering between like seven to 12 all the time. And then the Lancers would get it to like three or four. And then Southern Utah would go on a 5 0 spurt. And, you know, especially in the conference tournament, I felt like that's how the game played out. And I, I felt really confident watching that game live going into the fourth quarter that Southern Utah would win because they just had an answer every time. And there were certain moments where you went, oh, if that shot's going in. Yeah, Southern Utah. This is this is Southern Utah's day, but uh, but like you said, both teams in a very different spot right now. Yeah, and I think in that WAC tournament championship, watching that game, it was apparent that Lizzie Williamson was a difference maker, the WAC Defense Player of the Year, because CBU had no size; they couldn't match up with the size, and they like to attack the rim. They like to get downhill, get you know in the paint. Um, so that was a big advantage that the T Birds have now this year. Southern Utah doesn't have that Lizzie Williamson. Sure, Megan Smith is averaging 18 points, but they don't have that, what, 6'2", 6'3". Oh, center, Williamson, like Williamson, was six foot, w- w- Williamson was 6'5". Okay. She was 6'5", six six with a wingspan I'm, I'm close to 17. Right now. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 <laughs> yeah, you are. You know, it's definitely a loss that's being felt. If you look at the block numbers per game last year to this year, they're down for, for Southern Utah, and I, I think that – you know, Lizzie Williamson not being there is the one thing that you look at. And it's a team that 
Coach Mason has talked about is still trying to find its defensive identity. And, and I think that last year, you know, they did such a great job of orchestrating defensive game plan that was centered around, you know, Lizzie Williamson, big number 15 in the middle, because she was so effective and so good at what she did. If you didn't have a big that could pull her out of the basket, then she was just going to enforce her will. Right. And now there has to be more of a team defensive component. I talked to Coach Mason earlier today. She said, you know, uh, she feels like the one on one matchups are not something that they've been great at so far this year. And so as a result, they have to play really good team defense. And that's something that, you know, I think got better last time out uh, against UC Santa Barbara. They lost that game because they're still trying to figure things out. And that's kind of been the, the message from Coach Mason as well early in the season is you, you do have a core that is similar to last year, but it is not the same. Sharita Doherty and Lizzie Williamson were all conference caliber players. And when you lose those two, there are big voids to fill. And then the players who step into that slot, well, now players have to step up into their slots and where they were last year. And so they're still trying to figure things out. That, that's been, I think, the message is, you know, remain committed to the process of just getting better and figuring things out and work to play your best basketball, you know, by the month of March. And I think that the brand of basketball the Southern Utah women are playing right now is going to be a lot different than what they play by the time February really rolls around because they'll have incorporated new pieces. You'll have freshmen who are more experienced, but they are still trying to find that right slew of matchups and, you know, just kind of getting the feel for each other on both sides of the ball. I, I feel like that is the case and they're going to get a heck of a test from California Baptist tonight in, in Cedar city. Cause as we know, CBU is really, really good. So Southern Utah is one and three right now. And I want to make it clear for fans that are following or people that are listening. So the Southern Utah women that won the regular season and the WAC tournament championship last year start off, what, two and four? They were four and seven. They were four and seven entering conference yeah. play. So, I mean, that's – that's the, the problem is now that you have two conference games earlier than normal. How is that going to affect things, especially considering that you have the, the resume seating system with eight teams – that are only going only eight teams are going to whack Vegas. Like it, it's such a dynamic that you know it, it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out because no team is ready for conference play right now. I mean, we could say, well, CBU is five and zero coming in, they've beat a good Portland team this past week, but I don't think Jared Olson, CBU head coach, would say that his team's ready to face a whack opponent. You know, right now, like I just feel like well, I mean, they're about as ready as they can be from a record sure. standpoint. But I, I, I agree. I agree with your premise. I don't think any coach is You're coaching thrilled. differently in January when WAC play, when commerce play begins, right. than you are in November, December. And I right. think every coach in America would say that. So I'm very interested to see how this all plays out because there's more at stake for these two games. Than there are for the non-conference games. And and here here's the interesting part about it is especially when you're in, you know, a low or mid-major conference like the WAC, the non-conference slate, even more so, is about tinkering, poking, prodding, moving players in and out of the lineup. Southern Utah has already used in four games, I think three different starting lineups. Because Ava Urich started the year coming off the bench. She started the last two. I'd expect her to start again tonight. They've had Lex Lord start a, a couple of games. Like every coach is trying to figure that out because when you're in a one bid league, like the WAC is likely going to be and has been historically, everything that you are doing as a coaching staff and everything about your process, I think, is geared toward you know, playing your best basketball and having everything ready to go once March rolls around, because that's when things really, really matter. And when conference play rolls around as well, especially with only eight teams getting to WAC Vegas, is something that I'm a huge fan of, by the way. I, I think that that's great. And I think that coaching staffs now have to look at it a little differently. And the, the interesting component is Southern Utah is going to play California Baptist tonight and then Seattle U on Saturday. Both those games will be at home. When those teams meet again, because the whole purpose behind this, as I understand it, is to make sure that everyone plays 20 league games and everyone plays everybody twice. Yep. So you play once at home, you play once on the road. I understand and, on, uh, you know, I get, I get all of that. When these two teams play again in Riverside, 
it could be a com- it could have a completely different feel. I mean, I mean, a completely yep. different feel. Like going into this game, Sam Johnston is I think four of twenty from beyond the arc through through four games. I'm going to go out on a big limb here and say, and you know, maybe she gets it going tonight. We know that she's capable of hitting a lot of threes in a hurry. But let's say she has a game that rivals what she's done. You know, through the first four, she did play well against uh, UC Santa Barbara. But if she struggles again from the floor, you'd think she's going to be in that sort of mindset or in that sort of place by the time the next conference game rolls around. I don't think so. And that's just, it's, you know, I'm not trying to pick on Sam or anything, but it's just one example. Of, daughter, so you have to throw it out there. <laughs> it's just, it's just one example of what is happening right now going into the game. It's going to feel completely completely different you know yeah. uh, another example for for southern utah is de la Bolina, who has been really good so far this year has not been i think as efficient as she would like to be or as she is capable of because she is taking on a larger percentage of the scoring responsibility with the loss of sharita doherty and that's something that coach mason has said yeah she wants to do it she is working at it but she's still figuring out how to do it she could be a completely different player just, I mean, just by the end of December, when you look at the lineup of teams that Southern Utah still has to play, they've got Utah on on the schedule still and some other good teams. So I, I, I think it's a peculiar thing for coaching staffs to have to deal with because I think they're really used to at this level, not, you know, it, it's not as if they're not trying to win. Of, of course they are, but understanding the process of navigating a non-conference slate in which you do have games that you go into knowing, okay, we're probably not winning this one, but we're trying to figure these things out. Having to suddenly, you know, jump into a conference game, I guess it's fair ground because everyone has to deal with it. But I, I can't imagine, like if I, if I were a head coach of a program in the conference and I have a system of this is how I do things for years in the non-conference slate and we figure things out and then we're full court press literally or metaphorically once league play begins, I would look at this and go, ah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I love that because I think it just changes the system. Yeah, no, one hundred percent agree. And and I think, like you said, every coach in this league would probably say the same thing right now because I'm sure, even though he's five and zero, Jared Olson from CBU is probably thinking the same thing that Tracy is. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what we're trying to do here. We're not even where we want to be. And yeah, I, I mean, it is about making sure that everybody plays everybody twice. Um, that's where the 20 game schedule comes in. So yeah, I, I like that a little bit better than having the uneven schedules like we did last year. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see this week when everybody plays everybody in this league and, and see how things play out. I mean, it, I don't know. I don't know what to think. And And like you said, Tracy, I think is still trying to figure it out because she's got two key players that aren't playing right now. So She's trying to figure out the rotations and who's going to be the key contributors and so forth. You know, she knows what she's getting with Dayla. She knows what she's getting with Megan Smith. Um, Ava, Ava Ulrich has played well as a freshman. You know, like, so she knows what she's getting from those players. It's who else is going to step up because, I mean, the shoes that she's trying to fill right now, those are pretty big shoes that she's had to fill from that team last year. Yeah, they they are. And I think you look at players who have done a nice job like Ava, as you mentioned, I think Charlie Kay, who has started all four games for the Thunderbirds so far, ha- has shown an ability to score. And that's just another example of a player who, you know, tonight's going to be her fifth career collegiate basketball game. You think she's going to be the same when uh, I don't remember when uh, CBU and, and SUU meet again, but I imagine it's in January or February at least. If, if if not March, let me double check the schedule real quick because um, it's not that hard January to pull things up. Twentieth, I think, is when the men do, but I, I'm assuming that's when the women do too because usually teams are playing on the same day. Yeah, January twentieth in Riverside. Yeah, so I, I think you know between now and January twentieth, you got almost two months of time yep. for for players to grow. And you know, I, I I also wonder about the psychological component of playing a league game at this point in the season. Like I talked about it from the coach's standpoint, but I wonder what the players think. I'm sure they'd say, you know, it's just another game. We have to go out. We know it's important, all that sort of stuff. But when you go into conference mode, when you're in a league like the WAC, and then you go back out of it, and then you're going to jump back into it. I wonder if the results of these games 
don't linger in their minds. And, and I mean, sure, they I think they could be used in a positive direction. It could be, hey, you know, we lost that game. Like whoever loses tonight will go forward and then in their non-conference slate and probably be thinking, man, we, we got to be better because we know that this is the standard that we have to get to. Or, you know, will it be that sort of approach or will it linger in their minds in a sense of, man, no matter what we do in the non-conference, we, we were not good enough to play with, with, with that sort of team. So I, I think it's a real kind of emotional test for coaches and players to deal with, with those sorts of things at, at this point in the season. Cause like we said, it's not conventional. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, it, that's the thing. Jumping from a non-conference into conference games back into non-conference, you know, after the two games, the thing is, I feel like there's more pressure in these two games this week than there are in any other games because oh, I totally agree. You want to get off to the right start in conference play. And you know that your trip to Vegas begins today. Right. Yeah. Like, that, and here and, you, and here's you know, the if you get behind by two games, right. that's hard to make up in January and February. Like it's like what like whatever happens, that's what I was basically gonna say is whatever happens in the league games, it's gonna sit with you yeah. for about a for about a month. For about a month, you're gonna have to sit and look. If you go two and zero, oh, hey, that's great. You're gonna feel really confident. But if you lose a game that you shouldn't, or that you feel you shouldn't, or if you go zero oh and two, that's gonna sit with you yep. for a month. And I think that is a challenging thing to deal with when you know, hey, we're not guaranteed a slot in WAC Vegas this year. Which again, I think is a good thing. I I, I think that yeah, it's, you have to earn your way in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I think earning your way in is is the right way to go there and. I'm all I'm all for it. So, but knowing that, it does ramp up the pressure yeah. on every conference game, and therefore on, on on these two games. And that's just weird to go from hey we're playing to begin our journey to get to the NCAA tournament. This game is going to directly affect it. To then going back to we're playing a game that you know we want to get better, we'd like to win, but also if we lose, it's not it, it's not an absolute killer. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how players handle that because there's so much more at stake with these two games than there are any other games between now and I want to say December 29th. Is it or is it January when they I think start? It's Jan- I, think it's, I think it's you got to turn the calendar over. I think it goes yeah, January 4th. 4th is when they yeah. start back up. So I don't know. I'm I'm very interested to see how these players handle it. I mean, on the one hand, you know, to play devil's advocate, it does you know, add some kind of immediate urgency to the games. Sure. Yep. And I, I think it does make it a slightly more interesting television product. I just think from, you know, a team coach and player standpoint, it, it's just odd and it, and it disrupts, I, I think, what people have, you know, come to know and, and be comfortable with. But I mean, no matter what happens, whenever California Baptist and Southern Utah play, you know, it's going to be a really hard fought game. And, you know, the Lancers don't have every player back from last year, nor does Southern Utah, but there are a lot of the same players and they played a game. I mean, this is a T-Bird team that ended the Lancers chances of going to the NCAA tournament. Yep. That, 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 that sits with you. That sits with you. So I, I expect California Baptist come out playing really, really fired up, even, even on the road. One cool stat as we end up, end this little clip here, as we previewed the game tonight, the last two of the last three regular season champions, California Baptist, Lancers, and Southern Utah Thunderbirds. Two of the last three WAC tournament champions, California Baptist, Lancers, and Southern Utah. And the Lancers didn't get to go to the tournament because the NCAA is ridiculous. Because they have that transition rule. Well, yeah, well, that's uh, a discussion yeah, yeah. for a whole nother day, everybody. Yeah, it is. It is. Spanish will be on the call. What is it, 7 o'clock tonight? On 6.30 ESPN. Mountain Time on ESPN+. Mountain. Plus. I'll be alongside my guy, Dallin Richards, who does a great job. There you go. ESPN Plus. So everybody tune in and enjoy the ballgame.